ವಕ್ರತುಂಡ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಕೋಟಿ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಸಮಪ್ರಭಾರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ಚಂದ್ರತಾರಾ 
Veshi Mataji, you are welcome to our global morning meditation. Let us bring our attention to our heart. Shri Mataji is residing in our heart. Now let us take our attention to our Sahasrara, to our Brahmarandra, trying to feel the presence of Shimadaji on the top of our head. And let us humbly bow to Shimadaji in our Sahasrara. Shimataji, please kindly guide this meditation so that we can raise higher and please you. Let us place our right hand on the ground our attention goes to the muladhara chakra and let us feel the purity of our muladhara chakra Shimataji, you verily are Shri Ganesha. Please awaken all the divine qualities of Shri Ganesha in our Muladhara Chakra.
the Diwali, that is the Pavali, meaning the rose of light. <coughs> In the darkness of Kali Yuga, when you find from ever, every place, uh, confusion of the worst type, creating the darkness which cannot be penetrated into, which looks like a solid mountain around us and which can never be covered as we feel by the grace of God and even with the grace of God it would never melt. In that darkness, in that hopeless state, when the creation is on the verge of its destruction, the light of Sahaja Yoga has arrived. And you are the lights, you are the Deepas, you are the little, little lights which were waiting to be enlightened, to be enlightened to see for yourself what's wrong within, your own lamp, what's missing in your own lamp. Now, in the lamp you have three things, as you see. One is the container. Container is this body. Container is this mind. And the container is this intellect. And the container contains within us itself is the oil. In Sanskrit language it's called as snigdha or sneha, means the love. It's the love that is within your mind, within your body, within your existence itself. But this love is now limited. It is in a dormant state. It doesn't express itself. It can spill out in wrong directions. It may spoil some things which are beautiful. This love, when it is limited, is very dangerous. But when there is a third thing within you, which we call as the bhati, is the wake. And this wake is the pure desire within you, which is not yet light. It is not aware of itself. Nobody is aware, the lamp is not aware that there is a light within itself. All these three things have to combine to give that light. Because we are lost in so many things. This darkness of Kali Yuga is not one-sided. If you see it clearly, it is not only materialism, adherence to money, adherence to money power. It's not only that. That's of course, is very important these days. We cannot neglect it because that's something is really weighing this whole balance of the Western world. But this money is for power. Why money? Because it has a power, according to many people who are blind. They think money has the power to win over people, to exist in higher powers of, say, execution of their administration and all that, you need money. To win over votes, to get elected. That's the myth people are carrying all the time, that money is very important and without money you can't manage things. And also because of this kind of a misunderstanding about money, people get very much impressed by the people who have money and they think, now, this is the time we must really gather money somehow. 
try to get money out of every kind of a adharma. What's wrong? So this money orientation has gone in this Kali Yuga to such a limit that the sense of chastity is lost, the sense of creativity is lost, because you must create something that must sell. If it cannot sell, then you should not. Then the sense of dharma is lost. There is no dharma. When it comes to making money, what is the dharma? There is no dharma needed. Only dharma is how to make money. Then, of course, the love. The mothers don't want children because they have to spend money on their children. It is the conceit, the selfishness that starts working. And people start thinking about how we can grab money from others. There are many sophisticated ways of grabbing money also in the modern times. And the sophistication has reached such subtleties that a person doesn't know till he's completely robbed. Now there are other ways of getting money, is now that <coughs> the kind of a music nowadays people are having, uh, which is against God, it doesn't sing the praise of God, but it's just a noise that they make. If you sing the praise of God, it's different. But otherwise, this kind of music that they have actually works on your limbic area. And the limbic area has the capacity to give you joy and happiness. And this limbic area becomes numb because of this music, of this horrible music of modern times. When it becomes numb, then what you do is to have more noise and more noise and more noise to give a sensation to the limbic area. Still you are not satisfied. I think better remove these two children, they are very stupid all the time fighting. Whose children are these? Better take her away, remove her. She's trying to be, no, remove her, she's the, she's the one. He's all right, she, she's the one. Whose daughter, is she your daughter? Don't cry, all right? You shouldn't do that way. If you want to sit there, sit quietly. Let him sit this side. You come here, this side. You don't sit with her, you come this side. Keep quiet, all right? Don't cry. Be a nice girl. So the limbic area, when it becomes sensationless, they don't know how to give it a sensation, so they take to drugs. You have to take to drugs. You can't help it because all the sensation is lost. So in the name of also anti-culture or you can call an anti-tradition, anti-this and anti-that, what you develop is a limbic area which requires sensations. Now the music fetches money because it's like drug. It's like any alcohol, it's any intoxication. Because already the nerves are intoxicated. Even alcohol works the same way. Even other things like drugs also work the same. So in that intoxication, you really do not know what are you up to, a kind of a, another darkness, another blindness comes over. So in this darkness, this another additional darkness makes people much more blind, much more understanding. This then takes us to the problem of the body that exists, of the mind that exists, of the intellect that exists. When the whole thing is directed towards money orientation, we put our body uh, for sale. We want to make our body look like uh, nothing on earth, I could say, like some sort of a tuberculosis patient, as they say, <laughs> or mosquitoes, because that makes people have some pity, I think, but inside exists a terribly a shrew type of a temperament in a man or a woman. The whole thing is done by entrepreneurs, if you see that, because they want to produce things and they want to create images by which you have to live. And if you have to live with those images, you have to take the kind 
of things they are producing. And that's how you try to use those things and you are just, you become just a slave to those entrepreneurs. It has gone too far. It has gone too far into the production of things where you have to play into the hands of entrepreneurs. We have so many diseases in our country uh, and these diseases are very modern, meant only for modern men. In the olden days, people didn't know these diseases, must be having one or two, but not many. So these diseases also come out of the fact that most of the things we eat or most of the things we do are just the games of the entrepreneurs. Nothing fresh, nothing genuine, nothing sensible is produced. Wants are created that you must have at least ten dresses, all made of pure plastic, <laughs> which reacts, which reacts and which creates problems. Then you should have all kinds of other materials which are absolutely harmless and are anti-human beings. All machinery is for us, we are not for machinery. So we have to give a balance. Whatever we need can be done through the machinery, but when machinery becomes the only source of exploitation, it starts dominating us. See, if you go to the darkness of this Kali Yuga, it's so deep, it's so horrid, and it's so dangerous and destructive that the description of it can take you to any length and you will not even feel that you are uh, getting into the mire deep, deep, deep into it that you cannot come out of it. So the antidote has come now as Sahaja Yoga, the Diwali, the Deepavali of the Sahaja See now, after realization, you don't need beauty treatment much. You don't need so many plastic clothes. You don't indulge into all kinds of stupid activities which are joyless. You don't take to drugs, don't take to smoking, you don't take to alcohols and you don't take to this horrid music also. On the contrary, you take to the music that pacifies, which soothes your limbic area, which gives joy. So you indulge into all the pursuits which will give you joy. You start giving up gradually. Sometimes I have to tell you, but then you understand, and you give up all those things, because then you have tested the joy. You know what is joy? You know the ambrosia of joy. So you don't want to give it up. You may a little bit give up, then again you come back. You know this is joy. Joy doesn't lie in money, doesn't lie in all these joyless pursuits, nothing. But joy lies in your spirit, and the spirit is the one that enjoys the joy. So this spirit is the one which you see uh, burning at the end of your kundal, on top of your sastrana, and you have seen the photograph, on top of your sastrana, you see uh, the beautiful flame burning. You have seen that photograph. It's the proof that now you are all the lights and that you have to give lights to others. You have to help people. Now, all your faces look like roses. Anybody can see you and can make out that you are something special people. You are not like ordinary people who look so miserable, horrible. And when you sing in the, that style also, you are singing God's sing. In every style, whatever you sing, which was once upon a time was regarded as anti-God, singing becomes something new. So now the light of Sahaja Yoga has kindled within you all these small, small lights which are 
going to enlighten the path for humanity for their emancipation. So the responsibility of Sahaja Yogis are great. They should get over all these limitations, like the light has got over all the limitations and spread all over. If you have a way of measuring how far this little light has gone, you cannot measure it with ordinary human instruments. But once it starts, it is spread to the last bit of it and comes back to it. In the same way, this light which is kindled within you spreads all over, is emitted all over and comes back to you. But of course, it is just a material light. This is a spiritual light. The difference is this light has its own power of burning, that's all. Also it has a power of giving some light in the darkness. Also it has one more thing that it can enlighten another light. But a Sahaja Yogi is not only the light himself, but also the one who can go to others. It cannot walk. When it walks, it is fire. It cannot walk in its own limitations. Somebody has to carry it. So the Sahaja Yogis are the ones who can carry this light within themselves, very well preserved and very beautifully enlighten another person without creating a fire, without burning anything. You move this from here to there, one has to think twice if you can move because you may spill something or you may burn something, but not a Sahaja Yogi. And it is for the redemption. This can give you light which is outside by which you can see only, but you cannot feel and you cannot cure. You cannot give counsel nor can you comfort and you cannot redeem with this material. It is spiritual light that is within us. So today is a celebration of real Diwali. I always say that in India we were producing uh, the Diwali lights with ordinary mud. But now in Sahaja Yoga we have lotuses which are giving light, the fragrance, such beautiful things they are, and the way you are enjoying it and expressing your joy is so very beautiful. But to be the lotus, you have to give up this mud, this darkness. You have to give up that. If you can't give up that, then you cannot enjoy your own lotus and others can't enjoy. So that giving up is not difficult. You see, when people say that you have to love your mother, it just means that you give up your ego and your conditionings and become a pure personality, that's all. I mean, in any case, all of you love me, but still under limitations. You must love me without limitations. Then it is a real love as I love you. For this, we have to thank this time. This time is great, as I call it a blossom time, that at this time you were all born, and at this time I came, and at this time this combination took place, and at this time Sahaja Yoga was established. You don't know, I have gone through very great difficulties in the beginning, very great difficulties, because Sahaja Yoga cannot be understood by idiots. And first I met only idiots in my life. <laughs> Quite a lot of idiots. As Christ has said, the first will be the last, you see. So perhaps those idiots that I met have created lots of problems for me. But then real people started coming to me, they understood Sahaja Yoga, they took to Sahaja Yoga, and it worked out very well. Now we have plans to go to India. The speciality of Indian tour is that India, as you know, is a place of quite a lot of work done by the great saints, especially Maharashtra. Apart from that, it's a very, very holy land, no doubt about it. It's very clean. Still, the people have not taken to materialism to that extent. And thirdly, we have about eight pujas 
in such a short time. Of course, it is too much for me sometimes. But we have eight pujas, and this is something so intensive one can do. This I can't do anywhere else as I can do in India, because only in India the atmosphere, the vibrations are sucked in much faster than they are sucked anywhere, because the darkness is not so much there, and the light spreads much faster, much more easily, and I can find it easier to work it out. I'm sure those days will come everywhere when you put up your lights and you start working it out. I must congratulate all of you that you are the ones who are stuck on to this darkness and have created such light with such responsibility, with such understanding, with all the struggles you had to go through, getting out of your uh, very limited basic problems. It is remarkable the way you people have established it. It's unbelievable. Because, you see, you could have just said that uh, this is some philosophy, we don't believe in. This is something that we don't understand. But it's so congenial to you because you have become the Spirit. Christ has said the same thing. But who, how many have understood Christ? Nobody has understood Christ, I think, uh, till it came through Christianity. When it came through Sahaja Yoga, you have understood who He was. In the same way for all other great prophets, all other great incarnations. You had to come to Sahaja Yoga to see in that light how great they were, how much work they have done for us, how much they have established us, how much we should be thankful to you. I hope one day you can see all of them sitting with us and you can locate them wherever they are. Those eyes you should develop one day to see all that which your camera can see sometimes. And in the same way you should be able to see it will be a very good idea. I think in Bogota, some of the Sahaja Yogis did see the grace falling down. That's all, once. But it will happen more and more. Please try to improve your eye in the sense that thou shalt not have an ultra-size. Have no greed in your eye for anything. Try to remove the greed from your eye and it will definitely start working out. So this is the message for our eyes because through the eyes, you are the light. First thing that I have killed you is the light in your eyes. And that's what is the light, is to be improved, to be purified with love, with the Divine love. May God bless you all. Let us keep our attention to the Brahmarantra to absorb the vibrations of the truth. And let us become aware of our central channel, the Sushumna channel. We place our right hand on our Nabi Chakra. Trying to become aware of the depth of our Nabi Chakra. Our attention goes inside the spine where the chakra is located. And feel the peace of our Nabi Chakra.
Ivadaji, you verily are Sri Lakshmi and Sri Vishnu. The ones who support the whole universe, the ones who sustain the whole creation. Let us feel the sustenance in our Nabi Chakra. It is very strong and very light at the same time. Shimadaji, please fill my Nabi Chakra with peace. Balance. Generosity. Shri let your purifying power destroy all the greedy thoughts, all the material attachments, all the material desires and expectations. Please destroy them all. Let us feel our Nabi Chakra becoming lighter and purer. Sri Lakshmi Vishnu Mantra. Om Tameva Sakshat. Shri Lakshmi Vishnu Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha Shimataji, please make my Nabi Chakra devoid of any material desires. Please make it hollow, make it empty, please make it light. Shimadaji, let that my only desire in Nabi Chakra be the desire to ascend higher and higher, to become the spirit. 
the collective being. Shri Mahalakshmi Mantra. Om Vami Vasaksha Shri Mahalakshmi Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha Let us try to feel both the Navi Chakra and the Sahasrara. Our mother Kundalini is nourishing both of them. Imadaji, please make my Nabi Chakra ever pure. Nitya Shuddha. Shri Nitya Shuddha Mandra. Om Dvadeva Sakshat Shri Nitya Shuddha Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Niramara Vivekna Shimadaji, please manifest the power of ascent to liberation in my Nabi Chakra. As you are Sri Moksha Lakshmi. Shri Moksha Lakshmi Mantra. Oh, Tamirva Sakshat Shri Moksha Lakshmi Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri 
Let our attention on our Sahasrara enjoy the state of peace and liberation. Can place our right hand back on the lap and keep our attention to our Brahmarandra. Mataji, you verily are the supreme joy. Your form is the supreme joy. Shri Param Ananda Rupini. Shri Paramananda Rupini Mantra. Oh, Pameva Sakshat Shri Paramananda Rupini Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Gata let us enjoy the flow of vibrations inside us through the Brahmarandra. Let us try to feel, to become aware of the flame of vibrations above our head, the presence of Kundalini going through the chakras above our head.
Shmataji, you verily are the light that has enlightened us, that which will enlighten the whole world very soon. We feel our Sushumna Nadi very large and very high. Mataji, you verily are the peaceful light of truth. Last Mahamandra. Oh, Ameva Saksha Shri Aliki Saksha Shri Sahasrara Swami. Moksha Pradhayam Mataji Shri Nirvana Vidhi Namo Tapaha
Let us enjoy the presence of Shikalki in our Sahasrara and above our Sahasrara chakra. Keeping our beautiful state of peace, let us bow down again to Shimataji in our Sahasrara. Shimataji. Deeply thank you from our heart for the generous love of vibrations that you have bestowed upon us during this meditation. Please give us the pure attention to feel your love throughout the day and spread it all over around us. Jai Shimataji, let us all go down, praise our Kundalinis and take Bandhavi. Jai Shimataji.